Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at the bronsted lowry theory of acids and bases. We're going to talk about what bronsted lowry acids and bases are, the difference between a strong and weak acid, and define the terms monobasic, dibasic, and tribasic with respect to acids. Acid dissociation constants and pH have been covered in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about bronsted lowry acids and bases, there are a couple of ideas you need to be comfortable with. Dissociation refers to the splitting apart or breaking of a compound. For example, the salt sodium chloride dissociates into positively charged sodium ions and negatively charged chloride ions as it dissolves in water. A dynamic equilibrium refers to a reversible reaction in a closed system, in which the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are the same. This means at equilibrium, there is a mixture that contains both reactants and products, and their concentrations remain constant as long as the system remains at equilibrium. A position of equilibrium refers to how the concentrations of reactants and products in the mixture compare to each other. A position that lies to the right means a higher concentration of products in the equilibrium mixture compared to reactants, and a position that lies to the left means a higher concentration of reactants in the equilibrium mixture compared to the products for the forward reaction. Recap done, let's go. Acids and bases can be quite hard to define in chemistry, and there are two main definitions used, Lewis acid and base theory and the bronsted lowry acid and base theory. At this level, the bronsted lowry acid base theory is the one most commonly taught and studied and will be the focus of this video. In the bronsted lowry theory, acids are described as proton donors and bases as proton acceptors. To make things easy when writing equations, protons are usually referred to as H plus ions. This is because hydrogen atoms are made up of a single electron and a single proton. If a hydrogen atom loses an electron, one single proton is left over meaning a H plus ion is just a single proton. As a result, you will also see bronsted lowry acids and bases defined as H plus ion donors and H plus ion acceptors. For example, if we look at the reaction between aqueous hydrogen chloride, HCl, and ammonia, NH3, we can see that ammonium chloride, NH4 plus Cl minus, is formed. In this reaction, the ammonia molecule has accepted a H plus ion from the HCl, and the HCl has donated a H plus ion to the NH3. Using the bronsted lowry definition of acids and bases here, we can see that the HCl is acting as an acid, donating a proton or H plus ion, and the NH3 is acting as a base, accepting a proton or H plus ion. Such a reaction can be described as an acid-base reaction, and the ionic compound, ammonium chloride, that gets formed is called a salt. For some acids, each molecule can donate more than one H plus ion. Acids that can donate only one H plus ion per acid molecule are called monobasic acids. Acids that can donate two H plus ions per acid molecule are called dibasic acids and acids that can donate three H plus ions per acid molecule are called tribasic acids. These are also sometimes referred to as monoprotic, diprotic, and triprotic acids. For example, hydrochloric acid, HCl, as we've seen, can donate one H plus ion per HCl molecule, making it a monobasic acid. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4, can donate two H plus ions per molecule, making it a dibasic acid. And phosphoric acid, H3PO4, can donate three H plus ions per molecule, making it a tribasic acid. When acid molecules dissolve in water, they dissociate or split apart, releasing a H plus ion into solution. Technically, a single proton is never able to freely move around in solution. Instead, it binds to a water molecule, forming a hydroxonium ion, 
H3O+. As the water is simply carrying the H plus ion around, however, we don't usually include it in equations. Instead, we just write H plus aqueous. Writing H plus aqueous in equations is the same as writing H3O plus aqueous, just ignoring the water molecule carrying the H plus ion. As a base accepts a H plus ion, it forms what is called its conjugate acid. If this conjugate acid loses a H plus ion, it reforms the original base. For example, ammonia acts as a base by accepting a H plus ion and forming an ammonium ion, NH4 plus. This ammonium ion is the conjugate acid of the ammonia, and if it loses a H plus ion, would reform ammonia, NH3. When an acid molecule dissociates or reacts by losing a H plus ion, the negatively charged ion left behind is called the conjugate base of the acid. It is this conjugate base ion that goes on to form a salt in an acid-base reaction. When writing acid-base reactions, an acid is sometimes shown as HA and its conjugate base as A-. As in, an acid is made up of a H plus and an A-, minus, combining to give HA. For example, when sulfuric acid reacts, the conjugate base left over is an SO4-2- ion a sulfate ion. This is why sulfuric acid forms sulfate salts when it reacts with a base. Equally, when HCl dissolves in water, it splits apart into H plus ions and Cl minus ions. The chloride ions are the conjugate base of the acid, and this is why hydrochloric acid will form chloride salts, using that Cl minus ion. If a conjugate base in solution accepts a H plus ion, it would reform the original acid. When an acid dissolves in water, its dissociation is reversible, and there can be an equilibrium established between the acid molecule, HA, H plus ions, and the acid's conjugate base ions, A minus. For some acids, the position of this equilibrium lies massively to the right, effectively meaning only the forward reaction, dissociation, happens. These kind of acids are described as strong acids. Common examples include hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid, and they completely dissociate when added to water. If, for example, you add one mole's worth of hydrochloric acid molecules to water, they will pretty much all split apart and you will end up with one mole's worth of H plus ions and one mole's worth of chloride ions in the solution that gets formed. As every molecule of acid can be considered to have split apart, we say the acid has fully dissociated and is fully ionized. Other acids, however, don't always fully dissociate when added to water. This is because the position of the equilibrium between the acid HA, H plus ions, and its conjugate base, A minus, doesn't lie as far to the right as for strong acids. In fact, very often the position of equilibrium actually lies to the left, meaning only a small percentage of the acid molecules in water will be dissociated at any one time. In this case, the acid is called a weak acid and is described as partially dissociated or ionized when in water. <laughs> Rather confusingly, weak acids can be different strengths. Some weak acids are stronger than others and undergo more dissociation when added to water. This is all based on that position of equilibrium and is better described using an equilibrium constant called an acid dissociation constant, Ka. These have been covered in a separate video, check the links in the description below. Essentially, however, the stronger the weak acid, the more the position of equilibrium lies to the right, forward direction, and the more it dissociates in water. The weaker the weak acid, the more the position of equilibrium lies to the left, reverse direction, and the less it dissociates in water. For example, ethanoic acid and benzoic acid both only partially dissociate when added to water, and this makes them both weak acids. 
Ephanoic acid dissociates more than benzoic acid, however, meaning if the same number of moles of each were added to the same volume of water, the solution of ephanoic acid would end up with more H plus ions in as more of the ephanoic acid molecules would have dissociated and split apart compared to benzoic acid molecules. This means that ethanoic acid is described as a stronger acid than benzoic acid, although it is still a weak acid. <laughs> so, to summarise, Bronsted-Lowry acids are described as proton donors and Bronsted-Lowry bases as proton acceptors. When writing equations, protons can be represented as H plus ions. A hydrogen atom is made up of one proton and one electron meaning a H plus ion is just made up of one proton. When an acid dissociates in water or reacts with a base, it loses a H plus ion and the species left over is called its conjugate base. If a conjugate base accepts a H plus ion, it would reform the original acid. Bronsted-Lowry acids can be strong or weak. Strong acids fully dissociate in water. Each molecule of acid releases the maximum number of H plus ions possible and there are no acid molecules present in the solution, only the conjugate base of the acid and H plus ions. Weak acids partially dissociate in water, meaning at any one time there is a mixture of acid molecules, their conjugate base ions and H plus ions in solution. As the dissociation of an acid in water is a reversible process, there is an equilibrium established between the three. The position of this equilibrium is based on the strength of the acid. The stronger the weak acid, the more dissociation that happens and the more the position of equilibrium lies to the right, meaning fewer acid molecules in the solution and more H plus ions and conjugate base ions. The weaker the weak acid, the more the position of equilibrium lies to the left and the more acid molecules there are compared to conjugate base ions and H plus ions. Monobasic or monoprotic acids can release only one H plus ion per acid molecule. Dibasic or diprotic acids can release two H plus ions per acid molecule and tribasic or triprotic acids can release three H plus ions per acid molecule. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.